It's the military's best kept secret. A covert technology that borders on science fiction. These mysterious aircraft make futuristic movies and video games seem all too real. They demonstrate air superiority in key combat missions while keeping their technology shrouded in secrecy. But now, rare footage reveals new information about these bad birds of the skies. It's the ultimate virtual reality ride aboard the invisible airplanes of today and tomorrow. Stealth and Beyond, next. It's a revolution in modern warfare, high-tech and otherworldly, nearly invisible, and soaring at supersonic speeds. In a multi-threat global environment, these awesome airplanes will scare the pants off any adversary, and the enemy won't even see them coming. The key to their sure strike capabilities, stealth. These winged warriors primarily were designed to sneak past enemy radar. But they also have other stealthy technologies that surpass most conventional warplanes. Today, two stealth aircraft are fully operational. Three more are slated to thunder across the not-so-friendly skies in the near future. And these are only the ones we know about. I don't think there's anybody at the moment who can catch the Americans in terms of, of stealth technologies. It provides us the capability to dominate the airspace anywhere in the world well out into the future. In order to penetrate the spooky world of stealth, one must look at when this daring technology got started. The F-117A Nighthawk was the first operational stealth aircraft. The F-117A's bizarre design looks like something out of Star Wars. The plane resembles an oversized diamond because of its faceted shape, one of the secrets to its stealthiness. This black gem has proven its stealthy strength in combat missions, including Operation Desert Storm, Operation Allied Force in Kosovo, and Operation Iraqi Freedom. Anyone who sees what happened on day one of the 1991 uh, Gulf War will see what is achievable by stealth. When you had a small force of F-117 stealth fighters head into Iraq, totally unobserved, take out all the major leadership targets in Baghdad, and still no Iraqi really had a clue where to direct their surface-to-air missile or anti-aircraft fire. One, the F-117A is a stealth success story. But how did the project ever get off the ground? The idea of nearly invisible aircraft has been around since the dawn of flight. In 1917, Germany covered a Gotha bomber with cellophane skins to try to make it less visible. Although this primitive concept didn't work, the technology eventually took flight in the late 1950s during the Cold War era. Seventy percent of the Soviet Union's defense systems had been using a technology called radar. The system sends out electromagnetic signals which reflect off a target such as an airplane. Radar antennas on the ground can pick up the reflected energy and determine the distance and direction of the plane. In May 1960, Russian radar identified a CIA U-2 spy plane and subsequently shot it down using surface-to-air missiles. The pilot, Francis Gary Powers, was taken prisoner. The events sent shockwaves across the U.S. The Air Force quickly realized it needed airplanes capable of getting past enemy radar to destroy their ground weapons. The stealth race was on. American aeronautical engineers began looking into an aircraft shape as a way to deflect radar. In the 1960s, the Lockheed Corporation built the SR-71 Blackbird, a reconnaissance plane with simple stealth features.
The SR-71 was one of the first airplanes that I know of that was specifically designed to try to have low stealth characteristics, both from the point of view of materials and also from shaping. The United States' first real push to spoof enemy radar came in 1975. The Defense Department's Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, asked several aeronautics companies, including Northrop and Lockheed, to design a stealthy plane under the project code Harvey, named after the invisible rabbit in the popular Hollywood film starring Jimmy Stewart. But in the end, Lockheed proved they had the right stuff. They came up with a winning model called the Have Blue. The Have Blue was designed to be an airplane with the world's lowest radar cross-section. It was like designing a car to break the speed record. After achieving this low result, the Have Blue prototype was used to build the F-117A Nighthawk, which was conceived in Lockheed's highly secretive Skunk Works division. The company's president, Ben Rich, hired the best engineers in the business to work on the highly clandestine project. I was the first uh, program manager and chief engineer for the F-117. Stealth was, at that time, in 1977-78, was tremendously exciting. The Lockheed Skunk Works, where we all thought was the best company in the country, maybe in the world, at doing innovative technological things. Engineers first came up with a new stealthy shape. They used some clever math to remove any square panels and 45-degree angles, which dramatically reflect radar. As a result, they designed a multifaceted diamond-shaped airplane with radical zigzag edges around doors and windows to reduce the RCS, or radar cross-section. Radar cross-section is really uh, uh, the amount of energy that's reflected back from the aircraft to a radar on the ground that's looking for it. Another way to reduce an aircraft's radar cross-section is by applying radar-absorbing material, or RAM. It's a secret recipe of electromagnetic materials which absorb or redirect radar energy coming from ground base stations or other planes. A computer sprays on the coating, which absorbs the high frequencies directed at the plane, while the radar-absorbing structure absorbs lower frequencies. Shaping and coating reduced the F-117's radar cross-section by 85%, but who said stealth was only skin deep? The plane also featured a wide variety of other stealthy technologies, including visual, acoustic, and infrared, which is heat produced by engine exhaust. That's what an infrared-seeking missile will go after. It may not be able to see you on radar, but if it can see a heat signature, it'll go after that heat signature. Engineers solved this problem by creating thin ram-coated slots at the end of the plane's two engines to dissipate the exhaust and reduce its infrared signature. The F-117A was designed to be subsonic to further reduce the amount of heat generated at higher speeds. Another concession was the plane's highly swept V-tail, which lowered the radar signature but created an aerodynamically unstable plane. Simply put, the diamond-shaped aircraft is tough to fly. Traditional air vehicles have curved surfaces that permit air to flow smoothly over them. The F-117's uh, shape is not uh, aerodynamically stable. So if you, if you just locked all the control surfaces and then just let it fly, it would, it would pretty quickly just go out of control. The solution? Engineers installed a fly-by-wire system, a computer connected to the pilot's controls, which maintains stability in flight. Yet one of the most remarkable aspects of stealth is its highly classified technology. The F-117A was a deep black project. No one in government knew it existed except for the Pentagon. A black program is one that the funding is secret that the funding is concealed in various artful ways in the Pentagon's budget and is done usually at a remote location and the research is done clandestinely. In gray programs are when the budget is known and a little bit more comes out and uh, people know what's going on but don't talk a whole lot about it. The security at Lockheed was of course very, very tight. We worked in a building which had no windows. 
and everything that was in there stayed there. And you do not talk about what you're doing anywhere else. I was suspected of probably being a mole in the skunk works. I had an advanced degree which I'd got in Europe. I'd emigrated in my mid-twenties. I had worked my way into Lockheed into a very high technical position, and all of that, you know, fits the mold exactly. With secrecy being paramount, the F-117A's test flights were conducted at Area 51, a place the Pentagon claims doesn't exist. A remote area in the Nevada desert, 100 miles from Las Vegas. This mysterious site is a top security facility where stealth technology has been tested under the cover of darkness. The cloak of secrecy has attracted stealth sleuths who are obsessed with seeking out clues about the cutting edge airplanes. I've been out in the, out in the desert over 80 times. I will not break the law. I'll push it to the very, very edge. One of the ways I was able to find out information on what turned out to be the F-117 I have a lot of friends, they're now retired, that worked at the Skunk Works. And they would just feed me little bits of information, things that were not classified. So you get a little piece here and a little piece there and start filling in all the blanks. By the late 1980s, Lockheed had produced so many F-117As that they could no longer hide them. As a result, the actual aircraft was unveiled to the public on April 21, 1990. One of the beauties of American stealth strategy was that they kept it secret for the best part of 15 years. That gave them a 15-year lead on other people to keep stealth totally under wraps in the black world. But the F-117A was far from the final word on stealth. Coming up, Lockheed's competitor was about to build the most capable warplane in the world. about extreme stealth, this is considered the most survivable aircraft ever built. The large black flying wing resembles a prehistoric looking manta ray. The B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber is a low observable strategic long range heavy plane capable of penetrating sophisticated air defense shields. The monster bomber was designed for the Cold War era, but demonstrated its vitality during a 24-hour mission to Iraq in 2003. The B-2 certainly proved itself in combat uh, in Iraq. Uh, in fact, they flew them from the United States with multiple air refueling along the way. When it got there, the Iraqis didn't know it. The B-2's journey to super stealthdom began in the mid-1970s. Northrop had lost the first stealth competition to Lockheed's Have Blue, but DARPA wanted Northrop involved in a second program. This one incorporated stealth technology and precision-guided weapons to stop Soviet surface-to-air and air-to-air -air missiles. This required tackling the problem of including airborne radar to track tanks and at the same time be invisible to ground radar. I had come to Northrop in 1974. The government, through DARPA, brought us in to start looking at a different problem. And that was, how do you put a radar on a stealthy airplane? How do you get an airplane that can fly at altitude, that's looked at from all directions, and still be stealthy? Northrop was back in black. They began developing an advanced technology bomber which would be called the B-2. One of the major challenges was its shape. The company opted for a flying wing design. Aviation giant Jack Northrup had always been a fan of flying wing aircraft. In 1948, his company had built the YB-49. They discovered the aircraft's smooth curved surface didn't reflect radar waves back to the base until it was almost directly flying overhead. Also, flying wings could carry large payloads while weighing less and using less fuel because the drag of the tail surfaces are absent. So when Northrop began building the B-2, they introduced curvature into the surfaces to make it more aerodynamically efficient. 
and at the same time maintain its stealthiness. If you lay that curved surface over far enough, the energy will skip off and not reflect back, and you'll get aerodynamic efficiency. Northrop finally hatched a stealthy bird that resembles a black boomerang. The slim-looking plane possesses an extremely small side-view radar cross-section, but a wingspan of 172 feet. The leading edges of the wings are angled at 35 degrees, and the trailing edge has a double W shape. The aircraft is controlled by a quad-redundant fly-by-wire flight control system, which monitors all elements of the wing. The B-2 is a bomber aircraft, so engineers also face the daunting task of putting stealthy radar on a stealth plane. I won't come in any details on that, but we figured out how to put on stealthy antennas, how to put a stealthy radar in, and how to get an airplane, all aspect low radar cross-section. Northrop also concocted their own special batch of RAM, radar-absorbing material, along with perfecting other stealthy features. The B-2 is very hard to see at a co-altitude level because it lacks tails, and the B-2's long, flat shape doesn't stand out very well. Visual is very hard to handle. The B-2 is a very large airplane, and if you're flying low, it's going to have a certain visual signature and so the B2 has a black bottom because it's going to be viewed against a black space. In the past, jet noise was the sound of freedom. But it's a major problem when you want to be stealthy. The only way to really be quiet is to be a glider at low speed. As soon as you want to go fast, you're going to have shear noises. And the way to minimize that is go up in altitude. Another stealthy concern was infrared, or heat produced by the engine. Infrared, the primary source is the engine exhaust. And you've got to do things to cool that down. And I'm not going to go into how that might be done. Northrop has kept a tight lip on its stealthy bomber. At the time, the B-2 was kept under a veil of gray. From its inception, uh, President Carter had mentioned the B-2 in, in the early 70s. So it was a gray program. I think everybody knew it was a flying wing. We didn't know the dimensions. We didn't know what the capabilities were. While Northrop was developing a pricey stealth bomber, Rockwell, a competitive aeronautics company, was commissioned to revive their B-1 bomber project. The B-2 had to be described as a risky program. It was, had elements in its design that had never been done before. The B-1B, they felt, was something they knew in the early 1980s, scientists tried to make the B-1A stealthy by adding ram and newly designed ducted inlets, and they removed the spine fairing. The revamped airplane was called the B-1B. But the Air Force soon discovered, if you want a real stealthy aircraft, you need to start from scratch. As a result, the Pentagon put all their eggs in the cockpit of the B-2. On November 22nd, 1988, the bomber was greeted with patriotic fanfare as it rolled out of the hangars at an Air Force plant in Palmdale, California. If you can watch the B-2 flying, you'll see this angular black shape taking off, of course, and roar majestically overhead. And you follow it out of sight, and then all of a sudden you'll see a black line appear in the sky and then that'll balloon into the angular shape as it turns. Magnificent. Today, the B-2 can fly anywhere in the world within hours. The hefty airplane is capable of all altitude attacks up to Angels 5. That's Air Force talk for 50,000 feet. The two crew cockpit as a navigation and mission system that sounds as easy as driving a car. There's a simple three-way switch for takeoff, go to war, and landing. 
the stealthy bomber can carry up to 40,000 pounds of weapons, including nuclear-tipped missiles and bombs. The B-2 appears to be the stealth for all seasons. Even with a small fleet of 20 bombers, it has proven its worth. In March 2003, B-2s ran multiple 40-hour missions in Iraq without a hitch. Being as there are only 20 B-2s in the force, it is inevitably still a silver bullet aircraft. So you could have a, an instance where a single B-2 invisible to radar could fly over a target with up to 72 individual things to be struck on the ground and it can release 72 precision guided satellite guided bombs and take all of those targets out with precision nothing can match the b2's power and perseverance yet the air force kept pushing the outside of the envelope they were probing the outer limits for a highly maneuverable plane that is stealthy, yet looks like a real fighter. They got their wish. Now, rarely seen footage will expose a new stealthy warplane ready to break all records, including the sound barrier of stealth. A new, sleek, state-of-the-art tactical fighter, stealthy and super cruising. The F-A-22 Raptor is the world's fastest stealth plane and promises to rule the skies in any conflict. It will be the first aircraft to combine stealth technology with air superiority capabilities. The F-A-22 has the ability to detect, target, and destroy the enemy well before being discovered. The F-A-22 really brings an evolution from the previous stealth aircraft. F-117 was developed from the first prototype. The B-2 Spirit was the next major weapon system that, that embodied stealth, and it, of course, brought the capability to carry an attack at long range. F-A-22 takes the further step beyond that of adding a true fighter's maneuverability and speed in combination with the stealth and the integrated avionics. If you look at what the other stealth aircraft are out in the Air Force inventory, the F-117 and the B-2, if you compare the F-A-22 to those aircraft, the F-A-22 is the only one that's really a fighter, a true fighter. The idea of building an ATF, or Advanced Tactical Fighter, began in the 1980s when the Air Force wanted a new stealthy fighter to replace its older conventional warplanes. Aircraft like the F-15, the F-16, the F-18, it's been around for a while. And the new legacy is you take all the attributes of those fighters that we've had before, and now you add stealth. The F-117A sacrificed speed and handling with its unusual design. But by the 21st century, engineers figured out that you didn't need to have an odd faceted shape or a flying wing to deflect radar. With the aid of an intricate computer system, the F-A-22 can have the look and aerodynamic design of the F-15 and at the same time be stealthy. The F-A-22 possesses the ultimate radar signature, which is the size of a bird or bee. The F-15 and F-16, on the other hand, have the radar signature the size of a standard door. And the F-A-22 is an awesome looking plane. There's a, a long-standing saying in aviation that a plane that looks good is gonna fly good, and the Raptor is certainly proof of that. It looks good on the ground, it looks fantastic in the air, and it flies fantastic when it's up and away. The cockpit contains a revolutionary integrated avionics system. It houses six color screens, which provide easy to read flight and target information without distracting the pilot's attention. The aircraft avionics system takes radar information from all the other sensors, and fuses it together and then presents me one clean display that shows me the overall battle picture. What that allows the pilot to do is concentrate on the tactics 
and not spend a lot of time trying to put pieces of the picture together. When you're closing at 20 miles a minute on uh, another aircraft that's bent on killing you, every second counts, and that's what the F-A-22 brings. The F-A-22 has both the capability to go find other aircraft, fight its way into enemy territory, and then take out the uh, ground targets that the commanders need to be taken out. This is the F-A-22 cockpit demonstrator. What you'll see is the basic cockpit layout here. The control stick is on the side, very much like a uh, F-16. We have the throttles on the opposite side, and you'll notice a, uh, a large number of switches and uh, controls on these two devices. The uh, concept is called hands-on stick and throttle. And what it does, it allows the pilot to manipulate the weapon system and the sensors and to engage the aircraft in combat without having to move his hands around the cockpit. The F-A-22 fighter contains advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles and offers first look, first shot, and first kill capabilities. And what that means is that we can see the enemy first, we can shoot a weapon and then kill the enemy before the enemy actually ever sees the F-A-22. The F-A-22 is a supersonic speed demon, cruising at Mach 2 and without afterburners. Most fighters can only fly supersonically for a few minutes before exhausting their fuel. The F-A-22 can fly an entire mission. And this rare footage proves the F-A-22 is also an all-weather vehicle. In special climate control hangars, the fighter has demonstrated it can withstand sub-zero blizzards, torrential rains, and hurricane winds. They say it only takes two things to fly, airspeed and money. The F-A-22 certainly proves that. The smart-looking stealth fighter promises to possess air superiority when it becomes operational in 2005. But its production costs are about $100 million per plane. Consequently, the Pentagon has been shopping for a cheaper stealth fighter, which can also service three branches of the military. After a fierce two-year competition, one of the largest aerospace companies is gearing up to produce the most versatile stealth fighter planes on the planet. How can you get a cool, stealthy fighter without bankrupting the government? After a nail-biting competition with Boeing, Lockheed Martin won a contract to design such a plane. The F-35 Joint Strike Fighter or JSF, is the next generation of stealth fighters. It promises to be stealthy, affordable, and accommodating to the Air Force, Navy, and Marines. And much of its technology is also blanketed in secrecy. The Joint Strike Fighter program came about simply because airplanes are more expensive now. So rather than go to the cost of developing a new fighter for the Air Force, a new attack bomber for the Navy, a new close support plane for the Marines, the concept came of can we make one airframe which will combine these things? The F-35 was created, in essence, to replace the F-16. The F-16 was an aircraft designed in the 70s and had 35 years worth of life on it, and it was impossible to retrofit it back into the uh, F-16. So really, the F-35 represents the evolution of that, uh, that requirement into this next generation. The F-35 will come in three versions. Each plane will have the same internal avionics, but each will also contain unique features. The Navy version will have bigger wing and control surfaces, so it can make short takeoffs and landings on carriers. The Air Force model will be similar to the Navy version, but will have smaller wings and more fuel capacity for improved range. The Marine Corps version will incorporate a brand new technology, a shaft-driven lift fan propulsion system to make stealthy vertical takeoffs and landings, just like a Harrier. 
It includes a vectoring rear nozzle that looks like a mechanical caterpillar. It also has a counter-rotating lift fan. The complex system involves taking gas out of the engine and redirecting it inside the airplane to come out of different places on the bottom of the plane. Hundreds of Joint Strike fighters will be ready for takeoff into the wild blue yonder by 2010. Many view this stealth technology as a first strike option. But to really comprehend the F-35 stealthy versatility, one needs to hop into the pilot's seat. This is the F-35 or Joint Strike Fighter cockpit demonstrator. If you look at the cockpit of the Joint Strike Fighter, instead of the separate screens that we had on the F-A-22, we now have one large display. And instead of using cursors and buttons to move it, it's a touch screen display where we use our finger to decide how we want to change our screens and have multiple displays at our fingertips, literally. Along with advanced shaping, RAM, and internal weapons bay, the warfighter's newest stealth technology is its 21st century mission systems, which prioritizes information for quick response. Multispectral sensor sweeps give a complete picture of hostile surroundings with enough time for the F-35 to either attack or avoid the enemy. Also, an onboard route planner can find safe passage through high threat areas. When destroying a target, the fighter's electro-optical system instantly picks up and assesses damage data. The F-35's mission system provides a low-risk environment, but what if the military never had to worry about losing a pilot? Boeing may have lost the Joint Strike Fighter competition, but they made stealthy breakthroughs, which is helping them win the war on the digital battlefield. The company is making quantum leaps into the future frontier. She's off. Unmanned stealth vehicles. The Air Force and Navy are joining forces to create robot warplanes. DARPA has sponsored a competition called the Joint Unmanned Combat Air System Program. Boeing and the Air Force have completed phase one of the project by designing the X-45, the first unmanned combat air vehicle, or UCAV. The X-45 appears to be the most secretive stealth program around. Trying to procure information is like trying to count all the stars in the sky. But experts believe the unmanned plane includes an innovative radar evading design. I can't specifically comment on its stealth features, but you can see from its basic design that those kinds of things were thought about. I can't talk specifically about the radar cross-section, but with regards to a cockpit, there is a cockpit. And that is a ground station, which we call the uh, mission control system. Unmanned air vehicles aren't removing the pilots from the loop, but rather moving them from the cockpit to the ground. Steve, 846, we shall all gear up. 846, all gear up, doors closed, flush. We're now instead of one pilot per one airplane, we will attempt to demonstrate, you know, that a single operator can manage up to four vehicles in a very tense situation being in combat. The operation of unmanned airplanes doesn't really require a diploma from the Air Force Academy. Instead, it demands youthful dexterity and thousands of hours mastering high adrenaline computer and video games. What it is, is a video game in some context. In fact, most of the, of the operators that will use a system like this in the future are growing up today playing distributed interactive video games over the internet. And a lot of what we do is much like that. Will computer nerds become our future four-star generals? Unmanned planes certainly provide some appealing advantages. There are two primary drivers for unmanned combat air vehicle technology. One, of course, is that it lowers the cost. If you take all the support infrastructure out of an aircraft, traditionally associated with a pilot, ejection seats, environmental uh, controls, the other essential reason for taking a pilot out of a combat aircraft is that, of course, you're not nearly so concerned about losing an aircraft in a, over hostile territory. It's so much better politically to be able to 
send a vehicle in to target and drop weapons without the potential loss of a pilot. Our country has reached a point where we really, really, really don't want to lose people in war. Unmanned air vehicles also create opportunities for some futuristic stealth technologies, which sound like things only digital animators in Hollywood would envision. One actually involves transforming the shape of a plane in flight. That technology is emerging, so you could literally morph the vehicle to a different configuration in flight. You could fly them sideways. You could yaw them extremely. You can make them very thin. And in fact, that's one of the advantages of the X-45A. It is a very thin airplane, only three feet thick. Regardless of their shape, these lethal weapons will carry approximately 4,500 pounds of payload and be anywhere in the world in hours. They can execute a mission without the risk of prisoners of war on the 6 o'clock news. Still, not everyone approves of manless missions. Unmanned aircraft definitely have a future in the Air Force. I don't think unmanned aircraft will ever replace manned aircraft simply because when it comes time for combat, you rarely, if ever, fight the fight that you thought you were going to. With a manned aircraft, you have that ability to think and, and reason, whereas you have a UAV and they see a target and they want to kill it. Problem is, you can put some doubt into what you're seeing, because how many times have we identified incorrectly a foe? So you might shoot down somebody you didn't want to shoot down. But the Air Force doesn't have any plans to retire its top guns just yet. America's flyboys still have a long future fighting the bad guys. It's a brave new world, and the U.S. isn't the only one jumping on the stealth bandwagon. Foreign allies and former enemies are also entering the black. Coming up, the future of stealth aircraft is as far out as the existence of UFOs. Stealth is a high-stakes game. It was March 27, 1999. Operation Allied Force, Kosovo, Yugoslavia. U.S. forces were deployed to suppress the Serbian ethnic cleansing campaign against the Albanians. The stealthy F-117As had established a regular flight track over the mountainous region of Bosnia for several days, but this made them extremely vulnerable. We were very constrained in where we could fly the airplane. There was a policy in effect in the Gulf War that we would never fly the same track twice, because even if you um, weren't detected, if people feel that you're flying along the same track night after night, they can just fire all their weapons into that area. And that's just what happened. The Air Force ordered an F-117A to drop bombs on a target in Belgrade. Aware of their flight track, Serbian forces shot it down. The pilot was rescued, but the plane became a POW. Serbians collected its stealthy remains and presumably performed reverse engineering, studying the material to figure out its secret technology. When the F-117 went down in Yugoslavia, obviously that gave other people a chance to take that material and study it and see how it was made. That wouldn't give them production methods, but it would give them what the basic material was. I don't think there's any doubt at all that if the Serbs had sold uh, or given that, that uh, the bits of wreckage to the Russians. The former Soviet Union has already known a little bit about stealth. The Cold War was the catalyst for the technology. Now, there have been sketchy reports that the Russians are researching the stealthy benefits of plasma. They discovered that when a spaceship flies for long periods, its heat shield produces plasma. Russian scientists claim that they created an artificial plasma that can be wrapped around a conventional warplane to absorb electromagnetic waves emitted by enemy tracking systems. 
the Russians say that they can apply that plasma generation technique to any aircraft. They can retrofit it to make a MiG-21 as stealthy as an F-22. There's widespread skepticism about this, it has to be said, but the Russians are adamant they can do it. Allies of the US are also racing to develop stealthy technology. In addition to their conventional warplanes, Great Britain is rumored to be developing a secret stealth fighter codenamed Halo, or high altitude, low observable. From eyewitness descriptions, the plane seems to resemble the Half Blue, Lockheed's first stealth prototype. But European defense companies are still lagging behind the US when it comes to stealth. If you wanna join the stealth club, you're going to be part of a pretty exclusive club. There are not many nations that can afford to get into that game. It appears as though America's Stealth Club is finally opening its doors to new members. 17 countries are joining forces with the US to build the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Overseas allies will benefit from America's stealthy expertise. However, there's a reluctance to share its sophisticated technology. The U.S. has invested many billions of dollars in developing and becoming preeminent in stealth technology, and I don't think it wants to give that away willy-nilly to people who will sell it uh, in competition with the U.S. On the other hand, there's usually a desire for some cooperation with our allies. Other countries continue research, development, and production of superior machines, and we want to stay a step ahead. We don't want a fair fight. We want our people to go into an area of conflict with supreme advantage so they can dominate in the theater. The U.S. military still puts its faith and future in stealth. So how many deep black programs currently exist? The Air Force actually contacted me. Uh, the person who contacted me has a very high clearance, has been involved in black programs his whole life. He said there's 16 programs they're evaluating for declassification, of which four are manned. So if there are more black projects buried in the Pentagon budget, what are some of the latest and greatest stealth gadgetry? Some say scientists are developing a technology that will outperform any Las Vegas magic act. 24-hour or daytime stealth would make an airplane blend into any environment, just like a chameleon. Airplanes would be covered with reactive skins, which would sense hue, color, brightness, surrounding, and ground. The information would be collected, then an image would be projected onto the aircraft. We can actually change the color or change the contrast intensity in flight by chemical or electric means were being worked on in the early 80s, and no doubt would, be, would continue. Air stealth technology has provided the U.S. with a fantastic insurance package. Global air dominance for at least the next 20 to 30 years. But what about the next 100 years? What does the future hold for stealth airplanes? You could see some very wild designs in the future. The capabilities that you gain with digital fly-by-wire systems where we're not relying so much on the aerodynamic shape of the airplane. One of my very last conversations with Ben Rich, who was the retired president of Lockheed Skunk Works, we were talking about what's happening in the future. He said, Jim, we have things in the Nevada desert that are 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. If you've seen it in Star Trek, if you've seen Star Wars, you read in a science fiction book, we've already been there and done that. People were running around saying that they were seeing UFOs in the middle of the Nevada desert, that they were seeing what was, of course, the stealth fighter. So many people say that the perfect stealth shape is a saucer. Then that would be your optimum stealth vehicle.